Howdy guys, we're going to go through a brief overview of the play and record function in Guild of Gears training mode. First thing that I want to set up with is going to button settings. We want to make sure that we have a play and a record macro set. These do as it sounds. In our actual training mode, I can play a recording that I have and I can also record those recordings. So we can actually do everything in this mode. We don't have to go to the menus to do play and record. Um, but there are some additional features that we can play around with in the menus. Anyways, the first thing that we're going to start with, we're going to look to the top right corner where it says Trainee Dummy Slot 1. Whenever we see this, we can know that this means that I am Player 1. You are the character that you wanted to practice. It is always going to be that character. Whenever it says Training Dummy Slot 1. The Slot 1 is not important, but just the fact that it says Training Dummy. So, we can start to change things up by pressing the recording button. So when I press that record macro one time, it's going to change it to recording standby. And what this means is that my character is now player two and we're ready to start recording. Now, when I go into my record, I'm going to press the record macro for a second time and that's going to start the recording, right? So it starts the recording. I'm going to just do 2S. And then we're going to press the record macro for a third and final time. It's going to save to slot one. That's our indicator that it worked. And now I'm back to player one. So now that we've had this recording set, now whenever I play uh, our play macro, we can just get Kai to do what we just recorded. To say that I wanted to keep slot one's recording and then I wanted to record a second, uh, a different second slot. So what we would do, we're on training dummy right now where we start off. I'm going to press the record macro one time. It's going to take me to recording standby. Now I'm player two. Then I'm going to press play uh, the play macro, which is going to go to slot two and then slot three, slot four, slot five, then random and back to slot one. So anytime that I am in recording standby, meaning that I'm player two, we can just press that play button to change our recording slots. So now that we're recording slot two, what do we do? We press the recording button for the second time, and then we do our recording and press it for a third time to finalize so we have it saved to slot two. Now say that, okay, well now I can play slot two. How do I get back to slot one? Same thing, record macro one time, play button a few times to get to slot one, and then I like to just reset uh, because we already have something saved, so when I press the record again, it would start to overwrite that. But now that we're back on slot one, we can just have it be replayed, and there we go. So uh, the next thing that we're going to get into is the random. We'll talk about that. So I'm going to do this. We're going to just record. Uh, well, actually, let's do this instead. So we're going to go into the training mode. So we have the basic idea how to do our play and record in the actual match. Now we can look at the recording settings, um, just because I find there are a few settings that will make this a little easier to show. The first thing is the recording slots. This is no different than what we just showed. Um, you can just do this through the menus if you preferred. Recording start timing. This is something that I really, really love. I almost always use start slightly late or start late. And essentially what this does is when I go into my recording, so I press the record macro the first time to get to Kai and I press it a second time, we're going to get a nice red bar. And during that bar's animation as it times down, none of my inputs will come out. So Kai will just stand there, right? He won't move. But what this allows us to do is that we can do, you know, near buffered, um, you know, reversal timings. Or I can do, basically, I can hold up back. And at the soonest frame, we're going to go up back. Um, and we it would just be harder to do that if we had to time it with pressing the record button as we did our whatever input we were going to do. So I really like this macro, or excuse me, this option to start slightly late. You want a little more time, you can do start late. Play after position, this is a quality of life, so depending on the situation. So we're going to do two recordings. One where Kai jumps and does far slash, and then a second where he jumps and does 2S. Right, so if I have it set to play after position reset so when I reset my position he's just gonna go right into you know whatever slot 
you have it set to. If I wanted for him to do one uh, slot one and slot two's recording, we would press the record macro one time to get to Kai. We would press the play function as many times as it takes to get to random, and then we just restart. And now he's gonna go into this randomly, right? Uh, and this is useful for multiple reasons. Um, you know, you guys can think of the reasons why. I'm, I just kind of want to set you up to be able to do this easily. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about are the random replay slots. So right now we have slot 1 and slot 2 set with actual recordings. And then replay slot 3, 4, and 5 to nothing. So even though replay slots 3 through 5 have this bar set to 10, uh, because there's no actual recording on it, it will never be played. So it'll only, right now, despite this being 10, 10, 10, 10 across the board, you only have these two being recorded, so there should be about a 50-50 chance of either recording happening. Say I wanted slot 1 to happen more often, we could change it down to something like this. So by theory of, you know, this is twice the amount of numbers, uh, there's basically twice the amount of chance for it to be weighted to play. Um, if 3 had a recording and I set it like this, we can think this is 50% chance, this is 25% uh, and this is also 25%. So you can play around with how you want your recordings to be weighted um, on how often they're played. Most of the time I just set it to 10s across the board just so I know that it's, you know, it's queued up and it's ready to go if there is recorded material. And then m most of the time I don't ever need the weighted and if I do I would specifically come in here and change it so I have it set up. The last two functions I find the new players and mid-level players you might find uses for. Um, for instance, if I wanted to create um, a way to practice defense, right? So I've set the opponent to do a bunch of different offense and I, you know, I simultaneously want to lab other things. I can save my, you know, my standard issue defense bot, for lack of a better word. Um, and then we can load it just so it easily is available and I don't have to record it every time that I want to practice doing defense. So I don't want to get too much into that um, just because I think the people who would really be into this, there, there will be other tutorials and maybe I'll talk about it at a later date. I think um, everything that I said before about like the general ideas of play and record, it will take you so far in teaching you, you know, matchups and just... Uh, feeling a little more strong about how to practice, you know, things that happen in matches in training mode. So um, my last recommendation, and this is more just a recommendation for setting up your recordings, is that I like to start every recording with a jump or, you know, just some sort of cue so that I know that the recording is about to start. So if I start with a jump, right, it just makes it easier for me to you know, if I'm practicing how to get around this move, right? So let's say that we're practicing slot one. And I is always going to do this. I can play. I can play around with the timing of how I'm going to do this. Um, but the jump just lets me be a little, you know, you're just a little easier to get into it than if it was just immediate. So if it was immediate, um, let's say it was just like this. Oh, excuse me. Right. Like it could just get a kind of annoying going into it immediate like this. The jump I find kind of just creates enough time that you can start to think about what you want to do. Um, but it also doesn't take away the fact that you need to react to the situation. So if I set multiple uh, different situations, so slot one is jump into far slash. Um, slot two is jump into delay, then far slash. You know, you can still change up how the timing is. You always just have a buffer to get ready to go into it by having a jump start. Um, a jump start the recording, I should say. Um, I think that's the basics. That's what I wanted to break down. Let me know what you guys think. I think the recording function can seem really complicated, but it's really, you know, once you get used to the two buttons that you need to press, it is so invaluable and it will make you infinitely a better player if you can 
you know, get into the habit of just recording a simple situation and figuring out how your character can deal with it. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, stay tuned for more. Peace.